Welcome back, wine lovers. This is Bottle Talk. Today, I'll take you to the edge of the earth to review a wine for you whose owner gets a 10 out of 10 on the fun factor with a wine that punches well above its weight class. Let's check it out. What's up, wine lovers? Welcome back. I'm Robert Stomachuk, an advanced certified sommelier based here in beautiful Vancouver, Canada. And today, you get an episode of Bottle Talk, where wines get reviewed, never rated. Make sure you stay to the end of this episode because I'm going to give you an insider secret on how to save on every bottle of wine that you want to buy, and I'm going to give you one of my insider tips on finding true value in wine. So, let's start with the owner of today's wine. This is a gentleman named Dieter Meyer. In the early 1980s, Diener was a founder of the electronic pop group out of Austria called Yellow. And they had a smash through breaking hit called Oh Yeah. Or I guess, should I say, Oh Yeah. Yeah, that happened. Anyways, if you're not familiar with the song, check out Ferris Bueller's Day Off. And if you haven't seen Ferris Bueller's Day Off, I don't know that we can be friends. Anyways, with the success of that song, and a few other business ventures, Dieter invested in a winery in Argentina. And that brings us to today's wine, the Ojo Negro, 2018 Malbec. Now, and Malbec, don't forget, doesn't come from Argentina. It does exceptionally well there, but its roots are found in the Cahors region in the southwest of France. That being said, now this wine doesn't come from the traditional region of Mendoza, which most people know about. This is south, deep south all the way south, like Patagonia, okay? I've had the pleasure of touring and tasting this region extensively, and I've got to tell you, you truly feel like you're isolated at the end of the earth, and it is remarkably beautiful. And higher elevated vineyards there, Malbec does exceptionally well with that. It gives it a bit more elegance and balance and acidity as well. Ojo Negro translates to the black eye. So let's get to taste this wine, actually, okay? I should probably open this first get out my trusty code 38 to me the greatest wine screw wine opener crank waiter's friend on the planet okay so Melbeck is known for usually delivering really good value but lots of dark fruit medium full-bodied and kind of a luscious profile. Some would say maybe a spicier version of Merlot maybe, but it has this intense dark color to it. Sets up the palate letting you know that it's gonna be an impactful glass of wine. On the nose, just charged, loaded with an intense fruit bouquet to it. I get a lot of fruit, but when we're talking fruit, I'm gonna go into the blackberry family. Blueberry, blackberry, black cherry, black raspberry, if there ever was such a thing. I get a little mint, I get some mocha, I have definitely some smoke, touch of lead pencil, and cracked black pepper, but in a very savory way, like fine pepper. Just a kiss of vanilla, a little, uh, little bit of caramel. Yeah, just power charged with berry fruit flavors. Let's get it in the mouth. Mmm. Wow. Okay, so... Everything that I would traditionally look for in a Melbeck is definitely represented here. But to be honest with you, with Ojo Negro, it's amplified. And I mean lusciously. The wine is full-bodied for sure. I can confirm everything that I was smelling in terms of blackberry, black cherry, black raspberry. Mint, kind of a meatiness, more of a little baked fig. The vanilla is there, but softer creamed vanilla. And the chocolate that I'm tasting is the perception more of melted chocolate than anything else. A little caramel, that pencil. I get a bit more forced, mushroomy, leather. There's a rustic edge on the outside. It's not overly flamboyant. It's, it's lusciously expressive. 
really it's it's like Merlot with a set of jazz hands. Immediately when I'm talking about food with this wine, I'm thinking a lot of your wild game meats, you get lamb, grilled steak off the barbecue, stews, uh, roasted pork, smoked pork, pulled pork, pork in any kind of fashion at all actually. You can get into the cheese family, you could even get into the stronger cheeses like the blue cheese with this. Mm, nice grilled portobello mushroom would be fantastic with this. Kind of with a savory tomato jam inside there. Um, with If you were going to do something with fish with this, I would definitely use the cookie method of grilling with it. But I would go meteor fishes like swordfish and tuna, that kind of thing. Any pasta with a tomato-based sauce and you're there. Oh my gosh, it's going to be fantastic. The wine's got this kind of, it's this earthy dominance. It's bold, but it's balanced. It has lots of levels of complexity to it. And it's a great example of this particular grape. So, this wine retails for around $37 in the Vancouver market here. Now, for an Argentinian Malbec, to many, that might be a little more premium. But here's where my secret is in value. With the caliber of this wine at $37, you can stack this up against a lot of New World California Cabernet, Australian Cabernet, that would cost you the $80 to $100 range, and this would stand shoulder to shoulder with it. So that makes it a good value wine. Maybe 37 isn't an everyday price for people, but honestly, this is a wine you gotta get in your cellar. And if you accidentally forgot this in a corner of your cellar, 15, 20 years from now, you're not going to regret it. This wine, I assure you, is only gonna go up in value. In Vancouver, it is an exclusive wine to my partners at Marquee Wine Cellars. So shop in the store or online, use the code ROBERTWINE101, and you get 10% off not just this wine, but all the wines you buy. And if you haven't been in to check them out lately, you really should. There's beer, there's ciders, they have a spirit selection now that's incredible. A deep, deep, loving selection of wines as well. Dieter Meyer, thank you so much for creating a wine like this. It's absolutely stunning. Until next time, I'm Robert Stomachuk. Thanks for watching.